Ladies and gentlemen. This episode is sponsored by Advanced Skills Company, the official agent of JPI Healthcare in Iraq. I personally use the products of JPI Healthcare in my clinic for years now, and throughout the years, these products have been amazing in terms of providing excellent image quality at the lowest radiation dose possible, and they are durable, reliable, and efficient. I recommend if you are looking to establish your radiology practice, whether in a clinic, in a center, or in a hospital setting, to go to the JPI Healthcare website, see their products for yourself, and then call Advanced Skills Company if you are in Iraq, and these guys will provide the best possible solutions, whether in terms of hardware or software. I will leave the contact information in the video description, and don't forget to use the magic word highlights in radiology, because you will get a 10% discount on all JPI Healthcare products till the end of 2024. Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Highlights in Radiology. Today we are going to talk about a very important pathology that we might encounter in our daily practice, which is a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. This is Dr. Ahmed Bay Abdul Wahab, and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Stay with me. Vascular necrosis of the femoral head represents a region of dead trabecular bone and bone marrow extending to the subchondral aspect of the femoral head. Etiology can be either due to traumatic or atraumatic. Traumatic AVN, which is the most common type, is seen in about 10% of non-displaced femoral neck fractures and up to 30% of displaced fractures and 10% of dislocations. On the other hand, a traumatic avascular necrosis of the femoral head is associated with corticosteroid use in up to 25% of cases. Other causes include sickle cell anemia, lupus, coagulopathies, hyperlipidemia, organ transplantation, thyroid disease, and it can be idiopathic. It is seen four times more in males than in females. The most common sign and symptom of avascular necrosis of the femoral head is head groin or gluteal pain with or without referred thigh or knee pain. There is an increased risk of contralateral AVN, and the end stage of a vascular necrosis of the femoral head is usually destruction of the femoral head and joint osteoarthritis. The most common location of AVN is the anterolateral weight-bearing surface of the femoral head, which is variable in size from less than 15% to more than 30% of the femoral head. It appears as a linear or wedge-shaped subcontral necrotic focus. Like we see here in this x-ray, you can see the femoral head is completely sclerosed and it's damaged and the joint space is narrowed and the whole thing is just destroyed. Now, what radiology can offer in cases of avascular necrosis of the femoral head? Regarding the plane radiography, we use anteroposterior and proglateral positions and plane x-rays usually used in the staging of avascular necrosis, but it's not sensitive in stage 1 and 0. It starts being sensitive from stage 2 and above. The plane x-ray will demonstrate the involvement of the femoral head more than the involvement of the joint space or the other acetabular findings. So, it shows the femoral head sclerosis, subchondral collapse, which are an advanced sign of a vascular necrosis. For example, you can see here in this x-ray that the joint space is narrowed, the femoral head is flattened and it's sclerosed. This indicates a late stage of a vascular necrosis. And in this x-ray represents a milder degree of a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. Now, regarding CT scan, it's more accurate than the conventional plane radiographs for staging. It can demonstrate stage 2 and higher grades of avascular necrosis. And we should mention here that osteoporosis represents the first sign of avascular necrosis of the femoral head on CT scan. So whenever you see osteoporosis on a CT scan in the femoral head, it's an early sign of avascular necrosis. 
Also, the CT scan will show sclerosis with distortion of the central bony trabecular pattern of the femoral head. If you look at this CT scan, you can see the area of sclerosis of the femoral head. And if you look at this collection of different patterns of avascular necrosis of the femoral head, from mild to moderate to severe, in this CT scan, you can see the femoral head completely collapsed, disorganized, disoriented, with osteoporosis. And if you look at this CT scan, you can also see some signs of a vascular necrosis of the femoral head, including some subchondral sclerosis. Now let's talk about the golden standard in the diagnosis of a vascular necrosis of the femoral head, which is obviously MRI. On T1 weighted imaging, we will see hypo-intense peripheral band outlining a central region of bone marrow, which represents the interface between the necrotic and the reparative zones with or without hypo-intense area of bone marrow edema, which may involve the femoral head and neck. Hypo-intense joint diffusion also may be seen. Remember, we are talking about T1-weighted imaging. Also, well-shaped subchondral infarcts can be seen. Like, for example, here in this MRI, you can see the well-shaped area of avascular necrosis of the femoral head on both sides. Of course, it's more prominent on the right side, with surrounding area of hypo-intense bone marrow suggesting bone marrow edema. Also, in this case, this is another example of avascular necrosis of the femoral head on T1-weighted imaging. Now, on T2-weighted imaging, 80% of cases show double line sign. It represents a hyper-intense inner border parallel to a hypo-intense periphery with or without bone marrow edema. It involves the femoral head and neck. Also, joint diffusion is easily detected. For example, on this T2-weighted MRI, you can see the bone marrow edema and the double line sign of the femoral head. Another example of T2-weighted imaging, you can see the affected area of the femoral head. After contrast injection, there will be decreased enhancement in the early stage of avascular necrosis. The non-viable trabeculae and the non-viable marrow will show no enhancement. The post-contrast enhancement will correspond to the reparative zone of the hypo-intense band. Like if you see in this MRI, the non-viable part of the femoral head does not show enhancement, only the periphery, which represents the reparative zone. Nuclear medicine will give us bone scan and it provides an early detection than conventional radiograph, but it's less sensitive compared to MRI. Now we should know a little bit about the staging or the grading or the classification criteria of the avascular necrosis of the femoral head. The international classification includes five stages, and they are as the following. In grade zero, the imaging will be normal. It's seen only on bone biopsy, which will show some osteonecrosis. So we don't see stage zero of vascular necrosis of the femoral head. It's seen only on bone biopsy. In stage one, there will be positive bone scan with or without positive MRI. Like in this case, all you can see is just a little bit of bone marrow edema on this situated MRI. This is probably stage one avascular necrosis of the femoral head. In stage two, there will be mottled femoral head with sclerosis or cysts or osteopenia on plain radiographs with no collapse, with positive bone scan and positive MRI. Like we see on this X-ray, you can see the subchondral motor appearance, the sclerosis with a preserved outline. Also, you can see on this T2-weighted MRI some subchondral bone marrow edema with some motor appearance. Very nice example on T1-weighted MRI. You can see the motor appearance of the femoral head with preserved outline. Another example we can see here of the motor appearance with a preserved outline and again another example you can see here the uh, femoral head shows some mottled appearance uh, some irregular signal intensity of the outline but the outline is preserved again on the sagittal view you can see the same findings now on stage three we will see crescent sign lesions with depression of the femoral head articular surface. So whenever you see a regular femoral head outline or whenever you see a depressed femoral head, this is immediately stage three and more. For example, let's see here on this X-ray, obviously the femoral head is showing an irregular outline. So this is stage three. Again, you can see on this MRI, 
the irregular femoral head. This is the crescent sign that we're talking about. Again, you can see on this T1 weighted MRI, the depression in the femoral head, again, in this example, and in this example, the same findings. In stage four, there will be flattening of the articular surface with joint space narrowing and acetabular changes. Now the damage will affect the acetabulum also. Like if you look at this MRI, the femoral head is completely flattened, completely affected, destroyed. The acetabulum is also involved. So whenever you see acetabular involvement, this is stage four. In this example of T1 and T2 weighted imaging, you can see the complete flattening and destruction of the femoral head with affection of the acetabulum. So when there is complete destruction of the femoral head and acetabular involvement, this is stage four. If you look at this diagram, this is a very nice diagram representing the stages of avascular necrosis of the femoral head. This will be stage one, which is just bone marrow edema. There is nothing else wrong. Stage two will start showing some abnormalities at the superior lateral surface of the femoral head. In stage three, there will be some cortical depression. And in stage four, there will be flattening with affection of the acetabulum. So for stage one and two of a vascular process on the femoral head, the treatment is usually called decompression. As we see in this diagram, we make holes in the femoral head to increase blood supply to the bone at risk. So what is the differential diagnosis of avascular necrosis of the femoral head? Well, the list here includes tansioporosis of the hip, degenerative arthrosis, fractures, metastatic disease, infection, and osseous contusion. First of all, transient osteoporosis of the head. In this case, we will see osteoporosis of the femoral head and neck, and it resolves usually over 10 to 12 months. It might show involvement of the acetabulum and the femoral side of the joint. Like you see in this example, there is diffuse bone marrow edema of the femoral head and neck. Again, in this example, there is bone marrow edema of the femoral head and neck with some involvement of the acetabulum. The second differential diagnosis is degenerative arthrosis. There would be articular cartilage degeneration, and the acetabular changes usually happens first, while in AVN, the femoral head changes happen first. Keep in mind that the femoral acetabular impingement will result in osteoarthritis in younger patients with non-displastic hips. So if you see osteoarthrosis or degenerative arthrosis of the femoral head in younger patients with no dysplastic hips, think femoral acetabular impingement. Like for example, in this case, you can see the changes affecting both the acetabulum and the femoral head due to severe osteoarthritis. Again, another example, you can see severe osteoarthritis involving both hip joints. Both the femoral and the acetabular parts are involved. This is due to osteoarthrosis. The other differential diagnosis is subchondral insufficiency fractures. They might mimic AVN. Also, capital and femoral neck stress fractures are included in this differential diagnosis. As you see here, this is an insufficiency fracture of the femoral head due to diffuse osteopenia. Again, in this example, a milder case of insufficiency fracture, and on MRI, you can see the bone marrow edema, which represents the insufficiency fracture or the stress fracture, and this is typical location. Metastasis is a possible differential diagnosis which appears hypo or hyperintense. Depending on the type of the tumor, it's not centered in the subchondral femoral head, with gross trabecular destruction as usually confirmed by CT scan. Like if you see here, there is a metastasis involving the femoral head and it is not centered in the subchondral femoral head with different types of signal intensity depending on the original tumor. Again, another example of metastasis to the femoral head Head, and by CT scan, you can see the gross destruction of the trabeculae of the bone, suggesting metastasis rather than AVN. Another example on an X ray and a CT scan, you can see there is a lesion that is eating the bone, it's destroying the trabeculae. Could look like an AVN, but it's definitely not an AVN due to the trabecular destruction and the cortical erosions. Infection is another differential diagnosis, and here we will see hyperintense bone marrow edema on both sides of the joint with adjacent soft tissue edema and or fluid in addition to prominent joint synovitis. 
Like here on this tetuated image, you can see the bone marrow edema affecting both sides of the hip joint, the acetabular and the femoral head, with inflammation or edema of the surrounding soft tissues. Another example, you can see the bone is destroyed, there is joint diffusion, bone marrow edema, surrounding soft tissue edema suggesting infection. The final differential diagnosis is osseous contusion, which results in a localized bone marrow edema without a fractured fragment. Like for example here, it's just a bone contusion due to focal trauma causing focal bone marrow edema without any signs of bone destruction or fracture. At the end, I would like to remind you to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. If you have any comments, write them in the comment section. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. This is Dr. Ahmad Bayadurham, and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Bye.